to sky for the basket. And Perez deals. Fastball hit in the air to left field. That's deep. That goes Chavez back near the wall. Leaping and he made the catch. He took a home run away from Roland. Trying to get back to first entrance. He's doubled off. And the inning is over. Andy Chavez saved the day. Eli throwing into traffic on the sideline. They're going to ruin a catch by Manningham. Sanchez. Corner of the end zone. For the second time today, Santonio Holmes on the receiving end of a touchdown. This one with 10 seconds to play. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. From the 10, second and 18. Thibodeau got there, got the ball out. Snooked it and scored! Touchdown Giants! Kevon Thibodeau! What a play around the edge! Got to Heineke's arm! He gets the grand slam, he gets the sack, the force fumble, the fumble recovery, and the touchdown! Big time win for the Giants. Big time play by Kevon Thibodeau, who's finally making this mark as a rookie. Once again, it is a Monday edition, the weekend recap edition of WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, the Odyssey app, the iHeartRadio app, nccradio.org, and of course, the WHPC app. Whew, what a wild weekend of sports. Between the football games, big loss for the Giants, excuse me, big win for the Giants, big loss for the Jets. Basketball teams keep rolling locally, Knicks and Nets. How about that World Cup final? That was that was something. That that was Argentina had that match won like four different times, but France kept coming back. Not even France, Mbappe kept coming back. That was really a great great spectacle over in Qatar. Want to spend a couple of minutes on that match first, but before then, let me introduce everybody. Yours for today, Joshua Imahi, joined by Eric Williams and Ross Levine. How are we doing, fellas? Um, I'm doing much better. The Giants, uh, they won a divisional game here. For I mean, we won a divisional actual freaking game this year. It was but looking I, doubtful. I, I didn't know oh, if it was going to happen after a while. but uh, It was, especially as the game went on. It was, I mean, they were right on the goal line to watch, and it was just... Wow, but uh, thank you, Ron Rivera. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, I Riverboat Ron. Yeah, questionable decisions by Riverboat Ron, and also some weird officiating too. But we'll get oh, to that yeah. in a little bit. Uh, Eric, how we doing? Uh, so I just want to say, the expectations are low. You won't be as hurt. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So I've had these expectations since Green Bay, and yeah. this is what I expected. Yeah. So. You know, the, the Cowboys, I mean, the the discourse around them, your Cowboys, Eric, is always going to be, I mean, we hear Stephen A. Smith on first take every week. Oh, just wait, the uh, the collapse yeah. is coming, the downfall is coming. Well, it, it, you hate to say it, but after games like that where you're up 17, you're up double digits in the fourth quarter, and you don't, you, I want to give credit to Jacksonville because, yes, Trevor Lawrence is balling right now, and they did find a way to win that game offensively and defensively. But you know the, the national discourse is always going to be about the Cowboys and how they lost that game. But it, like you said, they were definitely looking ahead to Philly. We were talking about that pre-show. They have Philly this coming week. Well, you, you skip over and you, you look past Jacksonville a little bit and Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson changing things a lot. It's going to – you might have outcomes like that. But we do have a caller right off the bat on WHBC Sports Talk. Caller, what, what's up? What you want to talk about? How's everybody doing today? It's Corey David. Um, <laughs> See, I, I knew you was going to call in today. I didn't know when, but I find it fitting that you're starting off the show. For I, call, heard, so. I, heard, I, heard, I heard Cowboy talk, and I was like, I got to get in. Look, <laughs> hey, y'all may have lost, but you still won because of the Giants. Aren't you glad we won, Eric? When I found out, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that, that that was like the only good thing that came out of that Giants win. So, I, I mean, I just thought this though, y'all have y'all might really need that Odell Beckham move because I just don't feel outside of CD Lamb, y'all receiving core is it, it is mu- is much to be desired. 
I felt as though that play it was the right. It was the right play. It was the right play. It just wasn't the right play. <laughs> you talking <laughs> about the Noel Brown me. play? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It I was, mean, I can't disagree with that. It was a good play, but it was just the wrong player to. I was just surprised that Jacksonville was able to put up so many points against that Cowboys defense. I thought that to me, I felt as though your offense isn't like this historic like type of offense. But I felt as though your defense in the back end and how y'all played solid was be able to kind of like just basically like teams that were lower than y'all, y'all would be able to dominate. But it seems as though when you take those teams for granted, it seems like your defense don't show up. No, they definitely underestimated the Jaguars in the second half being up 17. Also, it's just like the points of turnovers. You know, Dak threw that pick in our own territory, gave Jacksonville the ball, and they scored but right I, off of that. But you know what the crazy thing is? I can't really I can't really clown you or anything. It's for one reason. You literally predicted the Jags was going to win on Friday. I told y'all that. <laughs> I was I a was, I was, I was, Now that I think about it, I look like the crazy one because I was the only one that said the Cowboys was going to win that game. No, nah, I did too. Hmm. Yeah, and with the, the Giants fans hit the Cowboys with the reverse jinx. That's what y'all did. <laughs> but, Corey, I'm surprised at you because you're calling in. I know, like, you want to you wanna pile on the Cowboys fans today, but your Giants came up with the biggest one of the yeah, year. Like, I'm surprised you're not starting off with that. Oh, look, did you see what the Giants posted? You know, We posted a, a picture of, you know, the sneakers app with the got em. We had a pair oh, of wow, burgundy wow. and yellow uh, Jordans. I told y'all that man wasn't gonna get no Jordans off us. <laughs> yeah, it's no no Jordans for no red, white, and blue Jordan for Taylor Heineke, Look, that's Sa- for sure. Saquon played out Saquon played great. Daniel Jones just did enough to get us the win. Kayvon Thibodeau showed up tremendously. Now, yes, people are gonna say, Oh, that pass interference call. But people gotta understand, like he was literally on there was fourth down. If they get it, they tie it up and we go into O T. Um, not necessarily guaranteeing a victory. So it is what it is with that situation. But I felt as though Dave calling that challenge to get the fumble, because initially I didn't think it was a fumble, but upon seeing the, re- seeing the replay, it was clear as day, and I was, that was a smart decision. That was the play of the game. Brian Dable, I mean, we talked about it. The, the commanders were definitely more talented than the Giants, but when you boil it down to coaching, you just criticized Ron Rivera, rightfully so. Brian Dable came up with some big time decisions, big time play calls, you know, all the way around. It was really, if you want to, you know, give an MVP out, obviously Kayvon Thibodeau would be number one on my list, but Brian Dable might be 1B. He was, he was great all night long. Yeah, just, yeah. In general, just in general, the performance for the Giants, I loved it. I'm, I, uh, I don't know what the rest of the season is going to hold for us. I'm hoping we can stay in ground and stay in this playoff position because I would really want to see what Saquon can do in the playoffs. Hey, looking at the standings right now, all the Giants really have to do is win one more game. Yeah, I mean, you got the hey, the Eagles. Vikings, Colts, and then the Eagles, Eagles, and they probably might be resting their starters. So you you feel real good as a Giants fan as compared to like 24 or 48 hours ago, for sure. I just knew I just knew we wasn't gonna get a tie. I just knew somebody was gonna win <laughs> somebody was gonna win this game. I don't know. We we might have been headed that way and uh, uh thank you for the call, Corey. All right guys. Yeah, have a good show. You too. Thank you, oh, thank I say you. you too. <laughs> Look at me. Well, you you know, sometimes we do wish Corey was in the studio. I I mean <laughs> as a as a as a hyped up Giants fan today, we need all that energy. And if you wanna uh apply that as well, Giants fans, five one six five seven two seven four four zero. But Corey brought up at least in tie. We we might have been headed that way if not for some weird referee stuff. Sure. Towards the I, end, I was thinking I, the same thing. I'm not gonna lie. It, we get so many calls against us for years. I don't feel the least sorry for watching it. <laughs> you know what's funny? Because I. I <laughs> I logged on Twitter after the game just for like I wanted to see the toxic discourse that the Giants fans are going to get into. <laughs> People were comparing that play that wasn't called actually two plays. Obviously the pass interference and then the they called the legal formation mm-hmm. on the Brian Robinson touchdown. Right. Yeah. So they were comparing that to I remember last year in week two the Dexter Lawrence offsides. Yes, I was just about to bring yeah. that up on the field goal when the kicker had missed the first time around and they got an extra go at it. That was crazy. I was just about to bring that up too. It's funny because you look back at that play, and Dexter Lawrence timed the snap up so good. Perfect. They called it offsides. Perfect. So, 
You know, referees, they act real funny, especially when it comes to these Commanders-Giants games. I mean, you can point back to the last game these two teams playing the tie. Yeah. You can definitely point to some moments in that game as well. But yeah. Washington definitely, they got they got hold a little bit. I, I, I got to call it for what it is. They got on that legal formation, and that's where I want to start first. The the Terry McLaurin, he's he's pointing to the line judge like, yo, am I in the right position? Yeah. Uh, line judge gives him a thumbs up, like, you're good. They score a touchdown, he throws a flag. Wait, wait, so wait. Like, time out, time out. Yeah, wa- I, go I, back and watch the replay. I didn't see no thumbs up. I just seen the ref not acknowledge him. I, I'm not going to say. I do think <laughs> it was fishy. I don't know. I, Come on, I don't bro. know. Y'all be on Twitter and looking deep, real deep in the stuff. You know, I just looked at <laughs> it for a, a glance on my TV when I was watching the game. But, yeah, I, I do think that was a little fishy. But like you said, um, the the calls against us in the past, and on the top of that, Kayvon got a hands to the face on the um, – Last, last, very last play of the game. Not even the hands to the face. He got poked in the eye. Yeah. So he got poked in the eye. That's crazy. So like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what the refs would be on. But listen, my team won. <laughs> so I'm gonna just stay. I'm gonna stay silent. It's I can't overstate how big of a win that was for the Giants because if you lose that game, you're looking at where Washington is six seven seven. Excuse me, seven six and one with three games left. And and were, you have the Vikings who again are they're you use the word fishy, France. They're the Vikings are definitely just to go off on a tangent real quick. Huh. The Indianapolis Colts, bro. <laughs> how, you, how are you up thirty three points? You're Yo, up thirty three to nothing at halftime. How do you ridiculous. lose that game? That was ridiculous. The Jeff Saturday show begins. Well, actually, it's going to end after. Well, it should. On you know what? I, interim should never get fired. He should get fired after, after that, that game. Yeah, and I like Jeff Saturday because I liked him in the media. He was obviously you know a, he was good at ESPN. He was good. Good at ESPN. A good player with the Colts and Peyton Manning. But bro, not even just him. Matt Ryan. I bet when the Vikings scored that first touchdown, he was getting war flashbacks. Like, oh, <laughs> it's gonna happen again. Uh-huh. It's gonna happen. Like it happened again. You did it again, Matt Ryan. Bro, it, it was crazy watching that game. Because it's like the way the Colts came out, you would never expect that in a thousand years. Like they dominated that first half. Like Kirk hmm. Cousins looking mid as always, hmm. and and you think, oh, there's no way a mid quarterback is gonna um, get his team back in this. And somehow it happens. KJ Osborne showed up big time for the Vikings. He balled out. He was looking like Jefferson out there, cooking up. But. Yeah, I don't know. I was in complete shock when I see the Colts blow that whole 33-point lead. I was disgusted. If you are not just a, a fan of the Colts, if you're just a fan of like good, smart football, you were offended, too, and you were disgusted. Yeah. It, because it's 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 that does not belong in the NFL. That's that's why. <laughs> it it, 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 that's XFL right there? Yeah, that's XFL <laughs> in, in itself. That might be CFL. <laughs> That that's that don't belong in the NFL. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's you, you, and not even that. When it was thirty six to twenty one, they get the interception with like eight minutes to go. Like you wouldn't even think then. Like, all right, you have two scores. Just hand the ball to to any of your running backs. Literally, literally. Or did they have Taylor in that game or no? They I didn't. I don't but think they, they were did. the first half. They were running the ball and us, utilizing oh. their running backs just fine. Well, so see. I think that's why they didn't run the ball. Taylor wasn't out there. I don't, I'm not defending them. I'm just mm. that's that's what I'm just assuming because Taylor's obviously a better running back than those guys. Not saying nothing against them, but they're not Jonathan Taylor. And, yeah, uh, they abandoned it. Like they they Jeff Saturday, the coordinators, they try to get too fancy, and it blew up. It just did because what ain't broke you don't fix and they tried to fix it and look what happened so right. and not to mention in overtime because even though it shouldn't have gone there they had chances they had like a, the ball a couple of times at least yeah twice they didn't they didn't score so they they weren't they like at they're like minnesota's 40 50 yeah five yeah they got so. that close you know what on matt ryan's tombstone when he dies not even when he retires when he dies it's going to say what Ross just said. We had chances. <laughs> Matt Ryan has had, and I know this is a Saints fan watching those games, those Saints-Falcons games up close. Matt Ryan, you'll give him chance after chance after mm-hmm. chance. What is he going to do with it? Gonna Nothing. Blow it. He's going to blow it. 
You know, even in the Super Bowl, he and it's funny that he now holds the record for the largest Super Bowl collapse and the largest regular season collapse. So yeah, I seen that. Yeah, so that was crazy. People were talking about Matt Ryan Hall of Fame legacy. That's his legacy right there. <laughs> put put that on his um potential Hall of Fame bust. So Daniel Jones can never. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know what's funny about that game, too, before I get back to the Giants? The last team to come back from 24 points down to win an NFL regular season game, this happened. You like that? You like that? <laughs> that game, <laughs> Kirk Cousins, Redskins, now Washington, That's the crazy. Commanders, <laughs> they came back from 24 points to win that game. That's where that sound bite, you like yeah. that, came from. Yeah. So Kirk Cousins did it again. How about that? He's he, he's like... How about he's that? Like, Mid, but then he gives you flashes where it's like, don't ever put mid next to my name. <laughs> no, for real. It, it's crazy because you look at him, I, I compare it to how I feel about Atlanta sports. The minute you're expecting something from Kirk Cousins, he's going to let you down. Yeah. But if he's behind, no, you can't underestimate that man. You can't. He, he can do uh, some magic on the football field from time to time. But we do have another caller on WHPC Sports Talk. Caller, who are you? Where are you calling from? What you want to talk about? Yeah, it's Frankie from Flushing, guys. How you doing? What's up, Frankie? I'll tell you, I was watching our Vikings game, and I was fortunate enough to see back in the early 90s that uh, Buffalo Bills come back against the Houston Oilers in the playoffs. I think it was a 28-point lead, 31-3. And those were two great quarterbacks, two great teams in the playoffs. And that was just fascinating watching that game. And then I watched the game against the, uh, you know, the Colts and the uh, Vikings, and I was just getting flashbacks. I was like, my God, I mean, are they actually going to do it? I was just shocked. I mean, granted, one team is markedly better than the other, but just, I mean, you can't lose a 33-point lead in 30 minutes. That's just disgusting. Who are you talking uh, about, Frankie? <laughs> yeah, and the Giants, I mean, I'm so happy. I mean, we talked last week. I really didn't think they had a shot. They really needed the game, you know, because Seattle and Detroit, you know, own the tiebreakers against them, and uh, they put a little space between them. Um, I don't know. Detroit is lights out. I mean, I... I mm-hmm. Frank, you still with us? Hello? Hey. It's white hot. There he is. All right, hold on, Frank. You got to repeat yourself. You cut out yeah. a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I'm a huge Giant fan. Of course, I want to see the Giants in. And Detroit and Seattle kind of own that tiebreaker because they beat the Giants this year. But, I mean, I really, I tell you, I'd like to see Detroit and see the kind of damage they could do because the other NFC teams, you know, they're not, besides San Francisco and Philadelphia, you know, I think Detroit's probably the third best NFC team that's probably not going to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They, you look at where they started. I think they start one and six. They they're did. now seven and seven. So they they're they're right. the hottest team in the NFC. I know the Eagles are thirteen and one, but you look at the team that's playing the best football in the NFC right now. It's the Detroit Lions. Without and question. I forgot. I don't know what show it was, but they were saying how when the Lions were one and six, they had like a one percent or like somewhere from one to five percent chance of making the playoffs, and then it shot all the way up to like forty percent. So right, I saw that, that, that was yesterday. crazy. Yeah. After the game, they had the yeah, like one, one, two percent. Now it's like you know, forty-eight, fifty percent. Yeah, that was, that was nuts. What well, I told y'all, yeah, though, I told y'all, Detroit going, yeah, they're going to pull that one up. I mean, they're definitely, you know, if the season started at the midpoint, I mean, even Washington, I mean, they've got a better record than probably everybody in that division except for Philadelphia. You know, because Washington started, I believe, one and three or something like that. So. You know, uh, the teams that aren't going to make the playoffs, some of them are better than the teams that are going to make the playoffs. Mm. In my opinion, the NFC is kind of weak. (laughs) Even Minnesota. I I mean, they have the record, but uh, they have a good record, but, you know, not so hot. Dallas almost lost to Houston last week, and then they lost to Jacksonville this week. So, you know, the teams that are up top, they're not playing like teams that should be up top. Look, I tell you what. With us playing Minnesota real soon, if Minnesota loses to us, they're officially trash. I'll tell you that. Because we know they've been yeah. fraudulent. They've been a big question mark throughout the whole season. If they lose to us, they are officially trash. Because our secondary 
was terrible last game against the Commanders. So if Justin Jefferson and Osborne don't tee up on our secondary, trash. Simple as that. Right. Right. All right, guys. Just figured I'd throw my two cents in. Have a great day. We always appreciate you calling, Frankie. Frankie. Thank you once again. You got it, guys. Take care. But, yeah, that's how how I feel about Minnesota right now because Mm -hmm. I don't think we're – I don't think we're in a position to beat a team like Minnesota. Not because Minnesota Minnesota's a godly team, but as we know, injuries are a very big thing and consistency is a very big thing. We only scored one touchdown against Washington. You know what I'm saying? And it was from uh no, I lied. We didn't score only one touchdown from against Washington. One offensive touchdown. Yeah, one offensive touchdown. You know what I'm saying? So that offense is real shaky. And Saquon didn't even get the ball rolling until, like, one specific drive in the second half. He had a little calm, little five, six yarders, maybe, like, a couple. But it was, like, that one last scoring drive when um, Graham kicked that last field goal. Saquon had, like, a 12-yard, 14-yard, and 15-yard rush where a bulk of his yardage came from. But before that, Saquon couldn't get the ball rolling, had one offensive touchdown, and we're just looking shaky out there. So if Minnesota can't put the nail in the coffin against us, then – that would lead me to say, like, you guys aren't what your record says. So I think this is a big, big game for us and Minnesota in a sense, just to, I guess, say, like, we're not trash <laughs> in a way. But, yeah, that's how I feel. It's going to be an interesting matchup because both these teams, the Vikings and the Giants, they've won these one-score games all year long. Mm-hmm. I, it's funny, I said about the Vikings to go back to the game against the Colts. I don't care if they're up 50 or down 50. They'll still find a way to win by one score. Mm -hmm. And we saw they were down 33. They still found a way to win by one score. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think there's no way you can say it won't be a close game, the Vikings and Giants next week. So we'll see what happens there. Um, But, yeah, a big win for the Giants. And, Franchi brought up Saquon Barkley, 87 yards. But the most impressive thing, the the commanders were the fourth best run Mm -hmm. defense coming into the game. So he was struggling a little bit, yeah, but the fact that he was able to get it going, you know, yeah. towards the end, have 87 yards on the ground, Daniel yeah. Jones chipping in 35 yards, like that's that's how you're going to win games. That's how the Giants have won games all season long. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they need to – Barkley had a very good drive, the last drive when they got the field goal. That was a very good drive yeah. um, by Barkley. Um, now, what I will say with Jones – he threw the ball 32 times, which is a little bit more than I thought, but I think Dable is trying to surprise Washington. I think he's trying to surprise the NFL because a lot of teams are stuffing the bo- they're stacking the box on Barkley. That's a fact. Everybody's going to do it. They're still going to do it. Right. So he wanted to throw the ball, keep the defense honest, and I respect that from uh, from Dable. I'm, I'm glad that he's trying to make the adjustments here. There, there are some questionable play calls from Kafka a little bit questionable but what I will say though is the offensive line running the run blocking was much better it was much better than it has been the last month it has yeah. not been great to yeah. be honest I mean Barley hasn't had a lot of room this time he had a little bit more room and listen Jones didn't make mistakes when he had the when he had the opportunities to make the plays he made the plays he I wish he threw for some more yard but again our receiving core is not good. Let's yeah. put it that way. It's 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 that's being kind. It's it's not good at all. And I like the fact that you bring up the the O line. The the blocking has been better. And I think that what the difference was when it came to that last drive, we used a lot of um, double teams between Glowinski and and yeah. Bredesen and Feliciano. Like we had them guys moving up to the next level, which I think was key in opening up those big holes for Saquon. Um, if it's not a double team. I don't know how our offensive line succeeds in the red game because I feel like nobody ever gets a push. But, yeah, yeah, I think that Mm -hmm. we did a great job as an O-line on the last drive. And as for the receiver core that you bring up, how do you feel about Isaiah Hodgins? I feel like his stock is on the rise. I'm a big fan of him. He's a good, like, wide receiver three or four. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I think. I mean, he's not – he's never going to be that number one that a lot of people – want him to be. The Giants that still think they need to go and get some receivers. Mm-hmm. I've always said Judas Smith Schuster was a guy I would look into just because he comes from the Chiefs. Kafka came from the Chiefs, so maybe there's a little bit of a connection there. How much does he have left though? Smith Schuster? He hasn't impressed me this year. 
that's yeah. You think he peaked in I Pittsburgh? Did. I think he yeah. definitely he hasn't been the same since Antonio Brown oh. hit him with the boo boo shoe stitch. <laughs> he hasn't been the same. They gotta get into, the Giants gotta get some interior linemen. Definitely, uh, definitely get some receivers. I mean, they they have so many holes, and yet the Giants are where they are. So it's that's crazy. pretty impre- impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Giants. The fact that they're what eight five and one now yeah. that's that's a win. That's a win, no oh, matter how it shakes out, for sure. Yeah. Got the third caller of the day on WHPC Sports Talk. Caller, what you want to talk about? Let's talk about the Giants. How's that? Sure. Sure, Dave. What's up? Yeah. Uh, not much. I have my first grandson. Yay, late, over the weekend. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, they named him Charlie. I wanted them to name him Saquon, but I lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, last night was great for the first series, and then I put on the mute button. Does Chris Collinsworth get paid by the word? <laughs> We might have to look into that because he does. He is a talker. <laughs> okay, and uh, the one thing about the one of the things about the Giants, uh, and again, I'm a lifelong Giant fan. How come there were no throws down the field? Uh, I mean, he, you know, with Slayton, just to loosen the D. De- I know, I know, Curl is a very good uh, safety, but everything was underneath. You know, every now and then you got you got to you know take it, especially with these referees. You take a chance with a with a ball downfield, and if you get the penalty, you get the penalty. But if not, well, he just loosen the defense up a little bit. I'm wondering the same thing as you. I'm about sick of these um, little comeback routes, these little uh, five-yard ends, bubble routes. Like, I'm sick of it. But, hey, I'm not the one in the box. All I could do is watch. Yeah, but, you know, the thing is, Richie James is is a very, very good slot receiver. I know we don't have the outside receivers uh, to complement him, but he's great underneath. Uh, Once he gets the ball, he's got another five yards in those legs. Yeah, yeah. He He just had a rough stretch. From that Tennessee game, yeah, um, well, he got his bell rung also. So yeah, so and the Giants' kicking game, which has carried them many times, is in very good shape. Yeah, Graham Gano. He, we talk about that one game, the last game against the Commanders. He came up short on that field goal. That's usually a kick he drills. I know. Well, he, he came back strong in this game, and he's definitely you know he's proven his worth as a kicker in this league. So yeah. And Evan Neal, Evan Neal absolutely needs help. Uh, they got to put a tight end on his side just to chip uh, whoever you know the def- defensive end he's going against. That's, I know Sweat is very good, but Evan Neal was just outclassed last that's night. That's the problem. We always got to put a tight end over there, and that's what so, I feel like makes us so one-dimensional. I hate that. I don't know what they got to do with Evan, but they got to get that boy's feet moving because it's it's nasty what I'm seeing from him. For him to yeah. be that high of a pick and to perform like this. I can't help but get frustrated. I just hope he can bounce back in the off season and fix whatever like he's that, got going on. That's generally what happens with uh, college players. Their first year, they're a little bit outclassed, and it's the second or third year that they come around. You know, like like Thomas. Yep, uh, you're right. That's exactly how it played out for Thomas. Now he's bowling. So all we could do is um, keep our hopes up. Yeah, you know, what was nice was uh, Landon Collins, you know, coming from uh, the Commanders, how he uh, sort of sniffed out a couple of the plays ahead of time. Yeah, he did a good job yesterday. I was happy to see him bowling. All right, well, you guys have a nice afternoon. All right, you have a nice day, too. All right, Dave, Thanks. thank you for the call, right. bro. That's some breaking news. Oh. Go ahead. Jalen Hurst is uncertain to play on sun, uh, Saturday. Really? With what? You got hurt? Sprained shoulder. Mm, throwing shoulder? Throwing arm? Then, uh, see, that it don't say, but he's uncertain to play. Whew. Now, how bad is a sprained shoulder? For a quarterback? If it's on his thrown arm, I, I would expect, like, yeah, you can't play through that. Like, They would, play the Cowboys Saturday, right? That's a tough turnaround. If that's a, We got to find out if that's a non-throwing or throwing shoulder. Yeah, we do. Like Eric's saying, if it's a throwing shoulder, he's not going to. I can't see him playing Saturday. But I'm pretty sure after you guys just took this, uh, you're probably uncertain if they could even beat a, a, hurts, I mean, a hurtless Eagles. Who who's their backup? Minshew. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew. I feel like he's good enough, yeah. to be a starting quarterback in his league. He is. He is. Last time we saw him as a starter, I mean, he wasn't, you know, great, but he definitely was serviceable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. The Cowboys. We're yeah. gonna get into them a lot more, a little bit. It's just throwing shoulder. Throwing shoulder. It's tough. But you think the Cowboys have an advantage? It's definitely good news if you're a Cowboys fan. Obviously, you don't want to see Jalen Hurts. Ah, but I yeah. wanted I wanted the competitive exactly, game. exactly. You want to if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, right? Yeah, I wanted to see at least what we have right now right. against this Eagles team. Now Jalen Hurts isn't probably not going to play, so it's just like 
Ah, that's disappointing because Cowboys Eagles I had circled for the last since these teams last played when it was Cooper Rush. Mm-hmm. Now Dak is back. I you know <laughs> Dak is you know struggling a little bit too, but you know it's disappointing. You want to see the best go up against the best. For my money, until the 49ers' latest um, surge, these two teams were the best two teams in the NFC. So I, I know a lot of people still feel that way. So it's going to be tough if Jalen Hurts can't go. Um, real quick before we get to the Jets, though, I want to kind of get into because Eric brought them up. What's the deal with the the defense for the Cowboys? Because we we talked about bad coaching. It's been a theme this season, but I don't know how you can have Michael Parsons and the defensive line. They're not really getting pressure anymore. I don't know what's going on that you can allow 40 points to that Jacksonville team. Now, Doris Armstrong was hurt last week. He played through it this week. He got hurt in this game. He wasn't getting to the quarterback. Then you got Demarcus Lawrence, which they they kind of like, ever since that one big year he had, teams have been like scheming him. To make sure he doesn't get to the quarterback. So he's just been like a run stopper. But you have Micah Parsons, and obviously, you know, you're going to have your best offensive lineman on right. him. You're going to try and mm-hmm. double team him as much as you can. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's not much we can really do. And then you got the nose tackles. It's just like, they they get there mm-hmm. every once in a while. Um, Most of the time, they're getting their ass whooped, though. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's tough because we talked about when they traded for Hankins from the Raiders. That was going to be a good pickup for them, but now he's hurt, yeah. and yeah. the holes are you know wide open again for they, the post running feel, games. I feel like well for running games, yeah. If Dallas was if Dallas was at the line of scrimmage, they're screwed. They just are. That's a fact. If Did, they they're screwed. If they if they lose at the line of scrimmage, they're done. And that's with a lot of teams. The thing that we're probably going to miss the most on Sunday is Leighton Van Der Esch. Because he went yeah. out the game, he played four snaps yesterday, he went out with an, uh, a neck injury, which is not like, it, it has nothing to do with his previous neck injuries, but, which is good, but, you know, he might not play on Saturday, which is like, you need him, because it showed yesterday that, you know, you need him to stop the run, because he knows how to run that defense, and he knows how to get around, so it's like, you got a rookie in Damon Clark, who is out of LSU and he dropped in the later rounds for us which is good but you know he's a rookie at the end of the day you don't know what you really have in him yet and then the defensive backs is like Kelvin Joseph burnt toast <laughs> right? you know what it, it, it makes me I, I hate to say this but it's like you know what Anthony Brown wasn't that bad because he'll give up one good play but other than that he had his side no I'm not going to say on lock but he, he contained it enough I'm I'm sorry because you know how bad Kelvin Joseph had to have played. He was bad yesterday to, for this man to say Anthony Brown wasn't that bad. That that's how bad Kelvin Joseph was. He was getting he was getting torched. I I can't call it anything else. I can throw all the adjectives in the book, but he was he was not good yesterday. So teams aren't even really throwing at Trayvon Diggs anymore. No. So they're really testing the rest of this Cowboys secondary, and so far with no pass rush, they're they're going to be. They're going to be toast. I feel like the only weak part of the defense is the defensive backs. And when you have that one weak link on that one side of the field and you he can't blink at the field, it's like you're going to attack him the whole game because you got the slot on lock. I'm not going to lie, Deron Bland has been playing well. I think we drafted him in the fourth round this year, and he has like four picks on the season already. He has some good plays on Christian Kirk. And then you got Diggs, obviously. He's been playing much better this year without the picks. But, you know, he's making an impact, deep impact. So it's just that one link on the other side of the field. The Cowboys have a big opportunity this week against the Eagles. They're technically still alive for the division. But with that loss, they really blew a golden opportunity. So Mm. no Jalen Hurts or they'll have Jalen Hurts the Eagles. We'll see what happens in that game. Let me remind everybody right now that you are listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Joshua Yamahi joined by Eric Williams, France Compare, and Ross Levine. Real quick, let's get to the Jets. And uh, Zach Wilson, first time we saw Zach Wilson since this. I think you got to put into account it's it's windy as hell out there too, guys, you know. Huh. Well, <laughs> Zach, I mean, it was it was kind of windy in MetLife uh-huh. yesterday. I mean, he... If you look at the stats, he didn't play all that bad. 18 or 35, half, you know, completion percentage, 50%. 317 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. 89 quarterback rating, like, that's okay. But it's it's like this guy is, like, the diet version of, like, you know how there's, 
Do you know how there's Sprite and then there's Dr. Thunder? <laughs> I'd never even heard of Dr. Thunder, bro. <laughs> that's, that's how that's how bad he, that's how bad yeah. it is. Zach Wilson is like the, the Dr. Thunder version of Patrick Mahomes. Because, <laughs> yeah, you'll have the excitement, huh. but, bro, just keep it simple sometimes. Like, it's right there in front of you. Just take mm-hmm. the layups. You don't have to go for the half-court three-pointer all the time. Yeah. Just, just keep it simple. But, you know, he, ha- he had the Jets in the game. The, um, the Lions scored yeah. that last minute touchdown to Brock Wright on a fourth and in inches. He goes the distance on like a 40 plus yard touchdown. Um, some questionable decisions on the last drive of the game from Robert Sala concerning timeouts, but you know, it, it was a winnable game. It was going to be a tough game because we, we just talked about how hot the Lions were coming in. And when you're not going to run the ball, Zonovan Knight only 23 yards. I, I talked about it on Friday. The Lions, one thing they do, they, they're not. The greatest secondary, obviously, but they do stop the run. They remind me, obviously, you have Dan Campbell from the the Saints coaching tree. You have their defensive coordinator, Aaron Glenn, from the Saints coaching tree. One thing the Saints defense is going to do, or one thing the Saints formula was at their best with Sean Payton, they're going to have an explosive offense and they're going to stop the run. They might give up a lot of pass yards, but if you can stop the run, that's important. And we saw the Jets with no run game. Zach Wilson was definitely prone to... Some missed throws and even that that bad interception in the third quarter. Yeah, there's, I know Zach Wilson threw for three hundred something yards and two touchdowns. I'm done with them. I think I'm done because let's be honest. You watch that game. Was that really a three hundred yard performance? No. I mean, come no, on, not at all. It, it really wasn't. I mean, so and listen. I know it's he threw an interse- He threw one interception, but here's the thing. That costed them three points. They lost by three points. That That's the difference. That's part of it. It's not everything, but it's part of it. And you also have to remember there are some easy throws that he's throwing at people's feet. He's missing them. He's just, he's missing these throws. Like that are any, even if you're like a fourth round pick quarterback, a fifth round pick quarterback, you should be able to make those throws. Zach Wilson is a second overall pick. He can't make the throws. I mean, so that's a big problem there. Now, yeah, he makes those great throws that it makes you think like, wow, he's actually not a bad quarterback. But if you can't even do the little things right, what makes me think that you're going to be able to score a lot of points? You're not, let's be honest. And people could say, well, Zach didn't, wasn't the awful yesterday. I hope he wasn't awful. And that's number that's number one. Number two, the Jets scored 17 points. 17. That's not a lot of points. I, I mean, you could blame the defense for giving up that one big play. The defense basically gave up 10 points, if you really think about it. Like, the one touchdown they gave up was the special teams. And then the other field goal they gave up was on Zach Wilson's interception. So they gave up 10 points. If you really think about it. So, with that being said, and the Lions were th- averaging 32 points per game in the last five or six games, something crazy. You held them to 10 points, and you lose. You lose that game. Like, I'm sorry, some of that has to go on the quarterback. just does. I mean, yeah, the running game wasn't very good. The Lions definitely suffering from not having AVT. But, my God, can, can you make a play, Zach Wilson? And then even worse, you're seeing Garrett Wilson. He's pissed. He was pissed at me. If you saw him on the sideline, he took his helmet off. He just pissed off. He's done. There, there's no way. You can go with him next season. There is no way he is your week one star for 2023. There's no way. Well, yeah, there's no way because the Jets are done. They're done. I'll tell you right now the Jets are done. They're not making the playoffs. They're in the ninth seed right now. I know the Patriots, which we will get into. I don't know what the hell that was on that last play t- against Las Vegas. I don't know what the hell that was. Jacoby Myers throwing backwards to Mac Jones, and then trust me, we'll get into that in a little bit. But the with all that being said, the Jets are still behind the Patriots. The Jets are the ninth seed, seven and seven. The Patriots, because of Zach Wilson, had the tiebreaker over the Jets. The, the Dolphins are ahead of them. The Chargers now. So it's, it's looking bad for the Jets right now. And we're going to look back 
when they do miss the playoffs, sorry Jets fans, but when y'all do miss the playoffs, we're going to look back to three games in particular. We're going to look back to those two Patriots games. Yeah. And like you said, Ross, you threw for 317 yards yesterday, but we're going to look back to yesterday's game, which was extremely winnable all season long. The Jets, I've said it, they have a championship caliber defense. Yeah. And you have a number two overall pick quarterback that can't do anything with it. We're going to look back at the Jets. They were, what, 6-2? and two? Had yeah, a great start to the season. Five, We're going to look back. Five and th- six and three. Six and three, yeah. yeah. We're going to look back, and when they miss the playoffs, Zach Wilson's going to be the, the fall guy, rightfully so, and oh, he's going to be on his way out. So, Because I, I don't see any way, even as a backup quarterback, he can be back. I, I, they can't really cut him because that's going to be too big of a cap hit, but if there's a team willing to trade for him, a project quarterback for a fifth, sixth-round pick, I think that's the move because I don't think Zach Wilson's going to be back. Yeah, no, he, there's, there's, there's no way. I mean, he, he, it's... Clearly, the locker room is more in preference of Mike White. That's, uh, you know, pretty obvious. They don't like Zach Wilson. And I still don't think they like Zach Wilson. Even, even after that game, I don't think they do. I mean, yeah, a- at least he didn't make excuses, but he's not performing. And you're wasting a really good defense. That's what you're doing. You're wasting it. I mean, this is a really good defense, um, the Jets. I mean, to hold the lines without Quinn Williams to that low amount of points, like the defense did their part. The offense did not. I mean, and in particular, Zach Wilson, because every every team's going to do this. Like I said about this with the Giants, about they're just going to stack the box and stop, and stop Barkley. Well, that's kind of what the Jets, if you really think about it, right? They're, the Jets' best ability is their running game. Well, now that everybody knows that Zach Wilson can't throw the, a freaking five-yard screen pass or a five-yard check down, they just know they're going to stuff the box, stop the run, make Zach be, beat us. And he can't. He just can't do that. So I already have my answer. Whether it's Mike White is the quarterback going forward or whether it's somebody else, either way, it's not Zach Wilson. It's not. It's It's... Name me the quarterback of the Jets next year. I, I would love to see the, what's the who's the quarterback next season for Week One of twenty twenty three because it is not Zach Wilson. Me, it's me. Yo, they need me at this point. Yo, France will be hooping.